today. Y'all all awake? About 70 of y'all still hung over from the club? I see what's going on here. It is good to be in Brownfield with you this morning. Glad to be here. Before we get into this, we're streaming to the other places. Can we give a big hand to our first-time guests, our West Campus, our South Campus, and our Next Gen Center? Come on, man. That is awesome. I heard they were packed over at uh, our West Campus today, and so you glad everybody wore deodorant. Come on, somebody. <laughs> or you got to put butter on. to sit. You ever been so tight you had to put butter on to sit under somebody? <laughs> Trish taught me in to go to Texas Roadhouse on Friday. I wasn't even sitting close to nobody. That butter was so good on them rolls, I just <laughs> did like that, man. So uh, it's fun to be here. I don't get to come here a lot, but I'm so grateful for the job Pastor Javi and Pastor Brittany are doing. Aren't you glad for your campus pastors this morning? And then it was fun for me to watch Jada uh, lead worship this morning. Jada is one of my church babies. She's been at TWC since she was three years old, and now she's 17, and to watch her Walk in her calling and her anointing is just a beautiful thing for me. And uh, I hope that your kids get to experience that as well, that they get to grow up in the house of the Lord and they serve God all the days of their life. Amen? Amen. So God never designed you to go through life alone. He decides you to go through life with relationships. Hey, Teach, is it better for these lights to be off than on? There we go. Oh, see, I, thought, I was just wondering if we paid the bill. There we go. All right. <laughs> Put a little bit on it. Can we take another offering real quick so we can turn on the lights? Come on, somebody. But he designed you to go through life with uh, relationships. But the principles we're talking about in this series will help any kind of relationship you got. So here is our anchor uh, verse that we're using every week, Lamentations chapter 3. And Lamentations is a tough book to read. If you never read that, oh boy, is depressed the whole book. And you're just like, Dad, he needs a hug or something. He needs some love in his life. Lamentations 319, I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul was downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope because of the Lord's great love. We're not consumed. Aren't you glad for that? Come on. Look, hey, you, I, I drove all the way from Lubbock. Y'all ain't going to sit on me this morning. <laughs> ain't you glad for God's love today? Look at, your, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, neighbor. you already here. Already. You might as well stay awake. Well look on your second choice. Say, I'm sorry you were my second choice, but you stay awake too. <laughs> Some of y'all needed a little ego bump right there. That's the first time you've ever been somebody's second choice. how that feel? You all that? All of a sudden, you're not a bag of snacks. Come on, somebody. He said, we are not consumed. Why? For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I'm so glad that I didn't work, uh, wear out God's mercy this week. I'm so glad that when I get up on Monday, I still got mercy. On Tuesday, I got mercy. And I don't know what kind of week you had, but if you go through some kind of week, sometimes you're just thankful for the grace of God and the mercy of God that carried you when nothing else would carry you. Huh? Some people don't know when you come to church, you caught hell all week, and it's just a blessing that you get to be here. And so sometimes we'll roll our eyes and we'll make fun of people when they worship. Listen, don't roll your eyes. You don't know what they had to go through just to get their hands up. Bless their name that they're here and they finally made it. Don't get saved and forget where you come from. Oh, that's the worst thing you could do. Church should never be a museum for saints. It should be a hospital for broken people. So I'm so glad that we have those. So Todd, are great relationships possible? Absolutely, but they're not likely. If we keep doing the things the way the world does, it's not likely that we're going to have great relationships. So last week, we talked about how to seek God. This week, we're going to talk about how to fight fair. Next week, how to have fun. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm giving you a disclaimer. Send your kids to Kids City next week. Because I'm going to say some stuff in that service that your kids may not be ready for. It's going to be a little PG-13. But you men are never going to be more excited you've been in the house of God than you're going to be next Wednesday, next Sunday. Next Sunday, I don't care if you got um, the flu and pneumonia and COVID. Bring your mask and get it. Tell your what we going to church, girl. I ain't missing out on this. 
I got to have it. So whatever you got to do, sir, I am going to fix you up. And the ladies may not like it so much, but you got, but send your kids to kids church. I'm telling you now, because if you get upset and you email me, it's going to be weird. So if you want to email me because you're upset, email me at Javi <laughs> at TWCLubbock.com and, and I'll make sure that I get it. Fourth week, we're going to talk about how to stay pure. If you're not married, you're dating, we're talk about that a little bit. And the fifth week, never give up. So this week, I had some people send in some uh, different things about silly fights that they had have. Silly fights. And so I want to read some of the silly fights that we get into. Anybody in here ever had a silly fight over nothing? This is my favorite one. And he's on the front row. This is my boy, Mike. Mike said we was on a road trip one time. And Brittany took the stick from his corn dog, you know, that little crunchy part at the end, and she ate it. That's the best part. He said, I didn't talk to her for the next two hours over a corn dog, y'all. That's a bad day right there. Um, Abigail said, I was hanging clothes, and my husband was upset that we didn't have all matching hangers. And I told him it didn't matter. It was fine because everything would have a hanger, and he refused to let it go. I'm, look, I'm like that at my house. I don't like those fat plastic hangers. They take up too much room. I need, to, but then I don't like those velvet hangers either because you can't just pull your shirt off. Come on, how I many? Because I'm too lazy to unbutton. Anybody with me on that? And so I, I'm, I'll fight with Trish over some hangers. I would do like uh, Mommy Dearest. <laughs> no wire hangers. Anyway, uh, here's another one. Where we go? Um, Jamie Ferris. This is one of my favorite ones. Jamie's a nurse. Her and her co, her husband Cody attend our South Campus. She said, I wanted Sloppy Joe's after a long 12-hour shift. And Cody, listen to her words, Cody had the audacity to make a homemade Sloppy Joe instead of Manwich. I cried. I was so mad. <laughs> that is a bad day. Um, Heidi Hertha said, early in our marriage, I remember we got in a fight and he slept on the couch for over a week. And neither one of us can remember what the fight was about. That's bad right there. This is Amy Arm says, my family has always made a staple meal out of macaroni and tomatoes. Literally, macaroni and tomato sauce. That's it. Her husband, Brady, had the audacity to spice it up. He added diced tomatoes into it, and I was furious that he changed my recipe. That's a bad fight over nothing. I mean, come on. Your husband's cooking. You better get happy. Uh, David Culp said him and his wife got into it because she, she didn't cook the right cheesecake f uh, flavor that he wanted. Is there a wrong cheesecake flavor? Right there, he don't deserve what he's getting. He don't deserve her. Amy Lucero, Amy and Jimmy pastor our South Campus, and she said <laughs> one of their first arguments, Pastor Jimmy, he's weird. He loves canned pears. Canned pears are his favorite thing. And a Amy took the last can of, can of pears and ate them, and Jimmy wouldn't even talk to her because she took his pears. And I'm just like... Bro, it's a pear. You could get that at any cafeteria at school. Come on. That's just nasty. So those are some funny fights. Trish and I have got into some funny fights. She would be with me today. She's preaching in Houston, and, uh, or she would be with me today. But one time, Trish and I got in a fight. I don't remember what we fought about. We were living in Brenham, Texas, and I was on staff at a church there, and Trish just left the house. She took off walking. So I'm like, man, my dumb self went following her. I'm like, girl, I'm in love, right? So I'm going to follow her, and I'm like, get in the car. She's like, I ain't getting in the car. I said, just get in the car. Just get, let's go. Just get in the truck. Well, while this is happening, a policeman pulled up behind us, and he lit me up. Boom! And he comes up, and he says, everything okay? I said, everything's great. And he looked at my wife, and he said, ma'am, are you okay? Are you, are you in danger of any kind? She looked at me like, I was like, Heifer, you better tell the truth. Because if I get bailed out, you're going to need to popo. I'm going to tell you that right now. I am too pretty to be in jail. <laughs> so, I, but, but this is the worst part. Our, the, the, our worship pastor was the dispatcher for the police department. So when they ran my license, I show up for church on Sunday. My pastor and the worship pastor calls me in. We need to talk to you about this little indiscretion. I say, it wasn't in my discretion. It was her indiscretion. I'd hurt. She didn't want to be in it. She almost got my job. Come on, somebody. Over, I don't even know what it was about, but I also remember, I don't know why we had this, because this is, like, we had a, a Rottweiler statue, a little bit of and she held that, like, if y'all, if I hadn't watched The Matrix, I'd have got hit. I mean, she, that girl is dangerous. Y'all pray for Trish. She is a mean, mean person. 
Next week, if you have any ideas for great uh, date nights, here's a great fun day night. Email us at socialmedia at twclubbock.com, and we would like to hear about any of your date nights. They don't have to be expensive. They just got to be fun. Trish married a youth pastor. We had zero money. I made $25 a week at my first job, right? Luckily, at that time, we still had putt-putt in Lubbock, and putt-putt had given all the youth pastors in Lubbock a free pass. So every Friday night, our date night was at Putt-Putt. And she was like, can we go anywhere else? I said, literally, we cannot afford to go anywhere else. This, this is all I got, girl, unless you want to go swing. <laughs> I'll push you into happiness. Come on, somebody. And, and, and so that, that was it. But I, I, if you got silly date night ideas, we'd love to keep it, keep it Christian. I don't want to open your email and glitter fall out. Come on, somebody. So the scripture says, somebody said, woo, that's my wife. Anyhow. <laughs> Does she teach a class? No, anyway. no. The scripture says, I have hope, and I want to encourage you today that you have a hope, and that is Jesus Christ. And God has an original design for relationships, and this is what they should look like. Genesis chapter 2. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one. In Proverbs, the wisest man who ever wrote pen these words, Solomon, Proverbs 18, 20, 22, or 18, 22. When a man finds a wife, he has found a treasure. Even Bruno Mars said that. He has found a treasure, for she is a gift of God to bring him joy and pleasure. Pleasure, come on. Psalms 133. Y'all forgetting y'all's chance to shout. I got some men in here. I'm, reading, I'm teeing you up in the Bible, and y'all ain't saying nothing. You ought to write that scripture down. I just want you to know, pastor said you was here for my pleasure. Come on, somebody. I have, I have never paid attention in church this morning, but I have taken all these notes. Pleasure. I'm going to switch the word from treasure to pleasure. That is what you are. All of a sudden, I feel like I'm Eddie Murphy from Coming to America. Thank you with chocolate. Okay. Pray for me. These things go through my head when I'm preaching and I'm not responsible for what comes out of my mouth. Because Trish ain't here, so I'm off the chain. Come on. <laughs> How truly and wonderful and delightful to see brothers and sisters living together in sweet unity. This heavenly harmony can be compared to the dew dripping down from the skies upon Mount Hermon, refreshing the mountain slopes of Israel. For from this realm of sweet harmony, God will release his eternal blessings, the promise of life forever. Isn't it amazing that God's original intent for relationship uses words like treasure, blessing, favor, life forevermore. It's a picture of heaven here on earth. God designed our relationships to be a picture of heaven here on earth. And if you're having any other kind of relationship besides that kind of relationship, it's time for you to get back to the gospel and do what God's called you to do so you can have what he wants you to have. Can you say amen? God wants you to have a blessed marriage. And it's okay if you enjoy being married. One man, one man enjoyed it. The rest of y'all, y'all go. Look, there is no scripture in the word of God that tells a woman to love her husband. Not one. Not one. But the Bible tells the man to love his wife like Christ loved the church. Why? Women are natural responders. If you give her love, she's going to give you love. If you give her hell, she's going to burn the bed while you go to sleep. And better be how mad you make her. She might take the batteries out of the smoke alarm. Come on. <laughs> that would be bad right there. What happened to your husband? Oh, I don't know. He was a hateful just one too many times, and I am done. So I just tell you to watch this. There's a picture of heaven that God wants you to have. And statistics say one in two marriages will end a divorce. Last week, we talked about seeking God and how it would completely change those odds if you just started inviting God into your marriage every week and every day. But my job is not just to help you survive marriage, but help you thrive in marriage. Marriage should not be survival island, right? It ought to thrive in that thing. And, and, and if thriving was God's design, then how can we fight over stupid stuff? How can we argue over silly things? Now, I know nobody in here has ever done that, but y'all take notes for your friends that marriages, they fight sometimes. Because at West, those people were tore up. That's why I came to preach this over here today at West. They're going, they're, 
they're crazy folks over there. And then we got the people from the hood. They're not shooting it up. Night, night. You know, so we, we got all that going over there at, at West Campus. And we fight over silly things. Part of it's because we're born into sin. But we are so radically different. And aren't you thankful that your wife isn't just like you? That'd be an ugly woman. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. Like, Pastor Todd, have you seen me? Yes, that would still be an ugly woman. <laughs> All right? So the question today is not if we fight, but how we fight. And we want to learn how to fight fair. And it's what we do from this day forward that makes the difference. If we don't get this right, we can win some fights and lose the relationship. I said, if we don't get this right, we may win a fight but lose the relationship. And, and we've all made bad decisions. We've all made wrong choices. Uh, but, but let me give you a few things. If you're going to learn how to fight fair, here's number one. We are fighting the wrong enemy. Your wife or your husband should not be your enemy. Come on, somebody. And somehow we believe the lie that the person we are married to has become our enemy. And I remember our first three years of marriage, Trish and I will be married 32 years this year, and the first three years of our marriage was, boy, it was tough. I was like, if you're here, who's running hell? Like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and that's a God's honest truth. She'll tell you that if you ask her. And, and then I don't know if she got baptized with holy water or what, but then she got better, and then it was my fault. And, you know, it's like, for three years, I've been terrible. And then I was like, I'm going to get you back for the next three years, you know. It was just dysfunctional. I don't know. Again, nobody in here has ever done that. But for your friends, please take notes. And, and, and so we believe that our married person is our enemy. But Bible tells us we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against evil rulers and authorities of an unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits and the heavenly places. But we become so blinded to the fact the person we're in relationship is our enemy. And I believe the devil has a despicable plan when it comes to your relationship. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Remember, Jesus was looking at Peter, and, and, and he says, Satan, get behind me. He recognized the spirit without changing his love for who Peter was. So you got to learn that right there. You got to run. Sometimes it'll be your wife. Sometimes it'll be your kids. And sometimes it ain't the devil. It's just you got baby's kids come home from school that day. And you're like, I'm going to tell you one thing. Y'all didn't grow up with that dad? Y'all didn't grow up with that dad? My dad was right-handed. And then we had, you remember, we got timeout, and I was so thankful for timeout until I learned timeouts when he went from right-handed to left-handed. Come on, bro. And I was like, Dang, this man is serious about this spanking. He is serious. And then he spanked you so hard that you get the pause. You ain't never been spanked till you get the pause, where you're like, ah! <laughs> ah! My dad would whoop me like that, and then he would get... That. I thought he wanted me to cry. Then he would say, if you don't quit crying, I'm going to spank you some more. And I thought, I thought I was giving you the results you wanted. <laughs> like, you're not bipolar. You's bi-planet. Come on. You, I, <laughs> I cried when the first swat, so I thought you would stop. No, sir. He was patriotic. He laid on the stripes, and I saw the stars. Anyway, <laughs> Jesus recognized this. Peter standing in front of me, but it's the devil doing the talking. You have to realize that your enemy is not your spouse. Come on, on my staff, when you're on my staff and you're with me uh, for a year, everybody on my staff gets one of you. Annie's got hers on. Um, how do you got your, quit texting on the front row, Mexican. You're supposed to be the pastor of the campus. I, I got to come all the way to Brownfield to get on to the campus pastor. Do you even pay attention to the church? Are you sure? Because I know your wife's pregnant. Are you sure that didn't happen during church? <laughs> it was an immaculate conception, Pastor Todd. <laughs> but all my staff guys get one. Y'all, look, I don't know how to behave. And if you don't like to have fun, you're at the wrong church. <laughs> Amen? You're at the wrong church. But all my staff gets one of these things. And, and here's what this means. This means covenant. That means that love assumes the best. And when we go into our, our, our staff meetings, we don't bring shields and we don't bring swords. Why? If I bring in a shield, that means I have to defend myself to you. 
If I bring a sword, that means I'm planning on cutting somebody. And if we're in covenant, my goal shouldn't be defend and my, def my, my goal shouldn't be to destroy. Because we said from this day forward, for better, for worse, and sometimes worse comes around early. But either we meant it or we didn't mean it. Are, are, are you tracking with me this morning? Covenant is a big deal in the eyes of God. And it's very imperative that you realize your marriage is a covenant between you, your spouse, and the Holy Father. Come on. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy. That's a good place to say amen right there. That who's who your covenant. There's three people that you're married with. And God should be in the middle of that marriage. And if he's not, you're going to have all kinds of trouble. Mark 3 said, if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Here's the second thing, a mistake we make when we're angry. We are driven by wrong motives. James chapter 4. Watch how many times the word you and your are used in this verse. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Do they come from your desires that you bat that, uh, battle within you? You desire, but you do not have. So you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and you fight. And you do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask God, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasure. Do you see how many there's you and your? There's a lot of I in this problem. Come on. And we've taken wrong turns and motives that can get selfish with self-interest. I can get my own self-preservation, come on, self-promotion, and self-defense. And the whole secret to a great relationship is a God-first life. And if we're not careful, we will move into a selfless, self-first life. And it happens faster than you know. Here's the third thing we do. We use wrong tactics. We use wrong tactics. We're demanding our right to be right, like Beastie Boys. You got to... Nobody... Thank you. One person, Jen. One person that used to be in the club. Here we go. <laughs> you got to fight. And that's how we feel like we got to demand our right to be right. And the greatest relationships, if you miss anything I say, don't miss this. The greatest relationship take place between two servants. Two servants will never end up in a divorce court. I'm telling you right now. It's when one person lays aside what they need and makes the needs of the other person more important than their own. And it is hard. It is hard when somebody is serving you to be a jerk. It is hard for you. Am I making sense to anybody? It is difficult for two servants. And, and like in, at our marriage, like Trish, her thing is touch. And I, man, sometimes our marriages are di uh, a direct result of how we grew up. I'm not saying your parents were bad. I'm just saying maybe you didn't see a great marriage. Had great parents, not a great marriage. What do I mean by that? I, I, I can't remember... Uh, seeing my mom and dad ever hold hands. My, my dad's been gone for six years now. I'm, I'm uh, 52, and I know what you're thinking. Well, you look good for 52, and you're not wrong. I'm like, wine, baby. I can just get better with time. And, and so I never seen him hold hands. I can't remember ever seeing my mom and dad hug. I, can't I, I, I don't even remember seeing my mom and dad kiss on the mouth. And, and it's difficult because I don't do that. And it brought trouble into our marriage because when we had a son, when he was a baby, I was kissing all over that baby, you know. Who, who's your favorite? Daddy is. Just say daddy. Just say. And when they go dad, you go, I got the smartest baby in the world, you know. And they're like, no, not really. He, he just pooped and peed on himself. So not really. <laughs> but I was all about Hunter. It was the best thing that ever happened. And it caused rift because my wife said, how can you be like that with him? But I'm the one that gave you him. And so I begin to think about some things, and, and, and so it started. Everybody has one of these things in your pocket, usually right around. You got these $2,000 computers. Yeah. Come on. How, how much these phones cost now? You ought to be able to call heaven. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and $2,000. And so you know what I started doing? I started putting reminders in my phone to send my wife a text message just saying I love you. I started putting reminders in there to send her some flowers. I started putting reminders in there to walk up and hug her and to give her a kiss. And you're like... That is terrible. You know what? You can complain and you can say that's terrible or you can realize I was trying to create a discipline that my wife needed in her life. And it was more important for me to continue to be lazy and just tell her to accept me the way I was because I'd never seen it. Come on. You can make excuses or you can make progress, but you can't make both. Come on. I'm preaching better than you're amen. 
And so it's important to me because I am in love with my wife. I want to, and if you're not careful, the only time you know she's in love, that you're in love with her is in the bedroom. Keep preaching, Pastor Todd. That's a good word. Thank you, Pastor Todd. You better be careful. I'm telling you, you start showing her some love and affection, it'll be her idea to go to the room. And you'll be like, oh, suck it, suck it, girl. Uh, let's go. You'll get a, one of them cheerleader signs. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Turn out the light, light a candle. <gasps> Y'all don't know Teddy Pendergrass? Huh? Somebody say, yes, that's how my baby got here. Yes, I know him. <laughs> How'd your baby get here? Awesome. <laughs> In a Chevy? <laughs> <laughs> I got to get back to this. We use the wrong tactics, right? First Corinthians 6 says this. Do you not know, I love this scripture. This is a power, powerful scripture. I didn't know this until I put this message together. Do you not know that we will judge angels? That's written to us, that we are going to judge angels. What are you telling me? I'm saying, church, we need to wake up because we're called to do higher things. Amen, we're called to do higher things. How much more than the things of this life? When, when you may demand your right to be right in your relationship and be dead wrong. Let's look at this scripture, Proverbs 18, 9. This is a powerful scripture. You might want to write this down. Proverbs 18, 9. It is easier to conquer a strong city than to win back a friend whom you've offended. Their walls go up, making it nearly impossible to, uh, to win them back. I tell people when I marry them, I never charge to do a wedding. That's my privilege being a, a pastor, right? That's your, your, you get to be their pastor and you get to do their wedding. And, 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 uh, Hopefully, you get to baptize all their kids, all that stuff. It's fun. But here's what I ask for payment. Like, if you ask me to do your wedding, I would say, listen, I paid my own flight to get here because some people have destinations way. I paid my own motel. I did everything you asked me to do. Bradley and Megan, I married them. My cousins are here this morning. I married them, and I said this. Thank you for coming all the way from Andrews. Did y'all bring me some steak fingers from buddies? <laughs> wow. You knew how fat I was, and I would like that. I did their wedding, and this is what I said. Hey, this is for free. They live in Andrews. I said, this is free. I said, I want to know. Call me when the check engine light comes on. Don't call me when the motor's blown. Hmm? Eric and Jess. I, Vic, I did the same thing. I said, that, that, nothing. It's my privilege. You call me when the check engine light on. Because if you wait for that engine to be blown, there's, it's almost impossible to come back from that. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Too much has been said. Too much has been done. But when you just need an old change, that's an easy fix. That's an easy fix, and with God, all things are possible. Can you say amen this morning? Come on, let's give God a good type of praise right there. That's good. God's trying to tell us in this scripture, when it comes to relationships, he's trying to tell us something. We're destroying our friends, our spouses, and our loved ones. All couples fight. Why? Because we were born into sin. We are carnal. We are drastically different from one another. And thank God again that you are. So we're going to have to disagreements, but healthy couples fight fair. Healthy couples fight not to be right, but for resolution. Unhealthy couples fight dirty. Unhealthy couples fight to win. What we've got to do is make a decision that we're going to change the course of our life. I don't care what your mom and daddy did. I don't care what your brother and sister do. This is your marriage. This is your house. And at our house, we are going to build our marriage on the foundation of God, and we're going to see him carry us through everything we need... Because if you don't, and listen, some of you don't heal right. You got one bad marriage. I'm not saying divorce. Look, divorce isn't God's first plan for your life, but it happens. And God redeems. But if you don't get healed, you're going to your next marriage, and the, the, your new husband or your new wife is paying for what the old one did. So you got to get healed. You got to get healed properly because it's not their fault. They came in with love and abandonment. But listen, a wounded heart leaks issues. That's why we do freedom class here at TWC. If you've not taken freedom, you should sign up for our freedom class yesterday. And so you may be here and you're like, well, that's us, Todd. We're, we're fighting each other rather than fighting for us. We're not even fighting the real enemy. Let me give you some hope today. There is hope. We can't do anything. West, South Campus here. We can't do anything about yesterday. 
I can't do anything about last week. I can't undo last year. I can't undo last month. I can't undo the last three years. But what I can do is fall back on my marriage vow and say, from this day forward, I'm giving you a clean slate. From this day forward, we're going to honor each other. We're going to love each other. And we're going to treat each other with respect. Somebody say amen. amen. James chapter 1. And let me say this. Never read the book of James if you don't want to change. It will rip you up. I mean, it starts out from the very beginning. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when encountering various trials. You're like, what? You want me to be happy about going through this hell? Knowing that the very counting, the testing of your faith will prove the endurance, that endurance may be lacking in nothing. And I'm like, yeah, just hard pass. <laughs> but he says, James 1, my dearest brothers and sisters, take this to heart. Man, this is another scripture I like to tear out because I'm not good at it. Be quick to listen. But be slow to speak. And be slow to become angry. For human anger is never a legitimate tool to promote God's righteous purpose. That's passion translation. I want to show you where we can get to a place in our lives where treasure, where good things, where favor, blessing, and heaven on earth characterizes our home and our marriage. So let me give you three rules for fighting. Fair. All my notes are in the YouVersion Bible app. If you ever want to go there, down YouVersion, hit the button that says more, look for events, and then find TWC Brownfield. And all my apps there are TWC Lubbock or TWC South. They're all there. Here's number one. I'm going to stop and listen carefully. I say stop because more often than not, we react rather than respond. Am I helping anybody? Yeah, I know nobody. Again, for your friends, take notes. Yeah. We get into an argument and we spout out the first thing that comes to our mind and, and we get, 99% of the time, we give the wrong initial reaction. 99% of the time, it's the wrong one. So we should stop and listen carefully and it's not an easy thing to do. But if we're gonna have, we're gonna have to develop some disciplines when it comes to this. You ever hear this out of your spouse's mouth? I can't even finish. I haven't even got what's out of my mouth, and you're already. If you would, I could finish. I didn't even get to finish before you chimed in because you're wanting to defend and you're wanting to win rather than to listen and grow. Oh, it's lonely in this church this morning. I feel all, all by myself. <laughs> Proverbs 18.2 says this, fools have no interest in understanding. They only want to air their own opinions. But I, if that don't make you mad, I don't know what else is. Because I guarantee you, you can look at that scripture right there and go like, shoot. I just got sniped by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Dead gummit. And I just want to tell you that I have to quote that to my wife all the time. <laughs> she should have been at church. She should have been out preaching in Houston. Then I wouldn't be doing this to her. But she wouldn't go to Houston you get Proverbs 18 too. <laughs> now we got to stop and listen. Find out what they're really saying. Here's a great practice to put in your disagreement. Southwest, listen to me. Repeat back what you, what you are hearing your spouse say. People don't hear what you say all the time. They hear what they think you said. Why? Because we all hear through filters. You all hear through your last argument. You all hear through your last bad relationship. You hear through the, if we don't get healed, that's how we hear. We hear through filters. And, and, and Pastor Todd, that's just dumb. No, dumb is driving off a cliff. Yeah. It's not dumb to say, hey, I got to change my filters. Yeah. When there's a sign that says road is out ahead and you're like, oh, I'm just going to try it. Mm. <laughs> and you go off the cliff and then you're heaven or hell, whichever one you go to, you get to choose. Smoking or not smoking, that's your choice. And you'll be like, I should have paid more attention to that sign. <laughs> and I'm saying here, I got a sign this morning, and I'm trying to tell you how to help your marriage. Come on. Don't push the gas pedal. Hit the brake. Hit the emergency brake and stop and listen. Stop. Listen. Where were you going, Annie? You were going with me? God bless you. See what that, see what that covenant bracelet does? She's about, to, she's about to make some change up in here. I see what I Listen. Ask your spouse, is this what you're saying? Because this, oh, this is what I heard. This is what I heard. Boom. This is what I heard. Give opportunity to force yourself to listen. 
It helps the person talking to be affirmed that you're hearing them, and it gives an opportunity to bring clarity to what's being said. And it keeps the focus on the issue and not on the person. That's the biggest part, on the issue and not the person. If we're going to fight right, number two, I need to guard my words vigilantly. Got to watch what comes out of my mouth. Matthew 15 says this, what truly contaminates a person is not what he puts in his mouth, but what comes out of his mouth. That's what makes people defiled. Proverbs 21, watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut. And if you will, and you will stay out of trouble. When I was 20, 21 years old, I was in a uh, discipleship program called Master's Commission. And I was in Phoenix, Arizona. And this lady was praying over me. Again, I'm 20, 21. I, I got no clue what this lady's saying. And she says, if you learn to keep your mouth shut, God's going to give you the ability to see into the hearts and lives of people. And I was like, okay, that's cool. You know, I, I had no clue what it meant, right? So years down the road, fast forward three years, and I'm a youth pastor in Brenham, Texas, and, and I'm praying for this girl one night at an altar. Have, have any of you ever seen The Green Mile? God, Holy Spirit speaks to me through movies all the time. And, you know, when John Coffey touched, you know, he's, that's how my gift works. A screen goes off in my head and I can see. But I didn't know this at this time. So I go to pray for this girl and this screen goes off in my head and immediately I'm like, oh, she's demon possessed. She's a witch. That should have never happened when you lay hands on somebody. So I'm like, <laughs> doing the MC Hammer, you know, over here. And I go pray for another girl and this screen goes off and I'm like, oh. She's got a friend. There are two witches in the church tonight. We're going to deal with this demonic spirit here in a little bit. And then I go to the third person, and it's a guy this time. And I go pray for him, and the same thing happens. And on the third time, while I'm fixing to say this is demonic, immediately I heard the Holy Spirit say, if you learn to keep your mouth shut, I'm going to give you the ability to see into the hearts and lives of people. And I'm telling you that... When, when you have a great gifting, and all giftings come from the Lord, it's not because you're the best thing since Big Red. All right? They all come from the Lord. But when you have a great gifting, comes great responsibility. And there's sometimes I want to, can I tell you the other night I was at my nephew's basketball game, and I wanted to react so, I was so mad about this call, and I was about to say it, and I remember it I had on my TWC hat. I said, oh, I'm never wearing church gear again. Like, <laughs> why? Listen. It's not what I put in my mouth, it's what comes out of my mouth. Yeah. And what, here's what's making it work. From the abundance of the heart, your mouth speaks. Yeah. You ever said this in your argument? I didn't mean to say that. No, 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 you meant to say it, you just wish you would have never said it. You just wish you would have never said it, but it's out of the bag. Remember, that? this is an old lie. This is a lie you learned since uh, you were in elementary. You probably quoted it when you were a little kid. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That is one of the biggest lies in our world. Our words inflict pain. The Bible says there is power of life and death in your tongue. In fact, there are many of you that are here today watching online, watching at west, watching at south, and, and you're still troubled. You're still haunted, even maybe it's the word, even broken by words that have been spoken over us to us and about us. And there were sometimes you wish you could have took the punch because at least the bruise would be gone by now. Y'all not ready for me. At least the bruise would be gone right now, but I got this word that makes me feel worthless every time I get, no matter what I do, somebody spoke this over me. And it's a word curse and you've got to come against that. And the only way to come against a word curse is to replace it with the word of God and get your value from the word of God. Scripture says, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are just these are the things I'm going to meditate on I'm not going to meditate on something that the devil let somebody speak over me I bind it in the name of Jesus why I am a son and a daughter of the king of kings and the lord if you believe that give God a good shot of praise in this place. you got to come against that thing or it'll take root in your life and if you're not careful watch me you'll produce it in your children Why? Because bitter people hurt people. Because you're trying to think of how to get ahead. How can I get them back? And now you're thinking like they are. And they've long since forgot about what they said to you. Watch me. 
They forgot all about what they said, and they're living free, and you're the only one still living in prison. And you built it, and what do you start to do? You do it, you started young, we begin to build these walls. And we're like, nobody will ever hurt me like this again. Nobody will ever do this to me again. I'm sick. Nobody. And you get this wall so big, but can I tell you something? It's hard to hug a wall. It's hard to get in a room that you built with yourself. Why? I read it a while ago. It is hard to win back a wounded friend because the walls go up. And some of you are here today and you've built walls. And the people that are in your circle now are paying for something that happened back then and it had nothing to do with them. And all you really need is just a moment with the Lord. Can I tell you three minutes, three seconds with the Holy Spirit will do more than 30 years of counseling for you? Three years with the Holy Spirit will do more than 30 years of counseling. So if you're hurt today, you're broken, I'm going to give you an opportunity to get that healed at the end of this service. But it's up to you. This is what I talked to Javi. I said, Javi, how are the altar calls going? And he said, man, sometimes they're good and sometimes they're like this and da, da, da. You know what? It's, there's a prideful issue in the city of Brownfield because it's a small community and we don't want nobody to know our business. But who in this room went to the cross for you? Is there anybody in here that calls themselves, Je not Jesus, but Jesus? <laughs> You'll catch that on the way home. If there's nobody in here, what, th this is a hospital. This is a hospital. You ever gone to the hospital or, or the waiting room and you're out there, hey, what are you here for? And they're like, well, why do you want to know? I said, because if you're real sick, I'm going to go back out and wait in the car. Nobody does that. Why? Because you recognize that you're in a hospital. It makes sense for sick people to be there. Come on. It makes sense for broken people to be there. We built the church of the worship center so that sick people could come here, so that broken people could get here, but leave better than the way you came. Don't let pride keep you from being healed by the Holy Spirit this morning. You've got nothing. you got a pastor that gets up every week and talks about how he used to be a dope dealer. How well you think that's going over in the community right now? Oh, you go to the church with a dope dealer. Listen, if I was still selling drugs, we'd have built a brand new building. Now. <laughs> Not refurbished one. Come on, somebody. Like Robert Fuller, we'd have had a crystal cathedral. <laughs> Why? Because I know, listen to me, I know if I can get you to the foot of Jesus, all things could be made new. If I can get you to the foot of Jesus, everything that's broken can be restored. Everything. Amen. Let me go a little further. I'm almost done. Words hurt. And once they're out, you can't put them back in a box. I didn't mean to say that. Yeah, you did. And you said it. There's no coming back from it. James 1 26 if somebody believes they have a relationship with God listen how stop this one is this is another scripture I'd love to tear out if someone believes they have a relationship with God but fails to guard his words then his heart is drifting away and his religion is shallow and empty a couple questions you should ask yourself in a time of conflict number one should what I'm about to say even be said well who's thinking that nobody that's why you got to rethink Come on. If you're not dead, God's not done. You can unlearn some bad behaviors. Should I, what I'm about to say even be said? And here's number two. And should it be said right now? Right now where the temperature is rising in the room. Do I really? <laughs> you going to go to sleep, sir? She's not. She's going to burn you down. My director from MC said, if it's not kind, if it's not necessary, and if it's not true, and it has to meet all three of those requirements, don't ever open your mouth. Think about what you're about to say. I also have to remind myself that people are more important than tasks. And that's tough for me. Y'all don't know me because I'm not here a lot, but I'm a very task-driven person. If I see something, like I came up to Javi a while ago and I came, how come there's no paper towels in there? And he goes, I don't know. And I said, how come there's no soap in there? So you got cochinos on the worship team. <laughs> They're not washing their hands. It was a big deal to me. That's all. And so I come right in, and we're in a worship moment. We're singing, you know, you know God's not going to fail, all that stuff. And I'm like, Man, somebody failed in the bathroom. I'm going to tell you that right now. And God saw it. That's how my mind works. But we're not task-driven. We're people-driven. Amen. Even at home, Trish wants to talk to me about my day, and, and I can be so driven by my own thinking that we can't. Like, she'll, me and Mike will go play golf. 
Mike's one of my best, he's really my brother. We've become brothers over the years. I'm very thankful for Michael Ringel. And we'll go play golf. And it's about four and a half hours, d- depending on where you're playing at. Come on. And we'll get through and Trish goes, what'd y'all talk about? Nothing. Oh, so y'all rode in a cart for four hours and nobody said anything? No, we said some stuff. There we go. So what did y'all talk about? Like nothing. You just said something came out of your mouth. Now you're saying nothing. I'm saying, well, we talked about something, but it was nothing. And I said, you don't want to call Michael Corey and ask him what he was talking about. He needs Jesus. Michael say, Michael Corey gets in trouble all the time. My wife calls him out on Facebook. Michael Corey. And Trish, here's what I've learned about her. She's like, what'd you do today? My mind went to work. This is what she wants to know. I got up and then I matched my shoes to my outfit. My clothes always match. You ain't never going to see me looking raggedy. You just like, I'm going to catch Pastor Todd sleeping one day. My drip is always dripping, baby. I'm always dripping. I'm going to tell you that right now. Uh, I'm always on point. And, and, and so she's like, um, so I got my shoes, matched my shoes, went to the office, and then I turned my computer on. And then it was a little thing I had to back it up because there was a new thing for Windows. And I had to load my new Windows program. And I, or actually, it's Mac. We always use Mac. Windows sends you to hell. But we got apples, and we're all on, on the MacBook, and we got it all fixed out. And then we got it all fixed. And then we, so we went to lunch, and then there were tacos. And they didn't put the, the queso fresco on my tacos today. They put the yellow cheese, and I was so mad about that. And then I asked for refried beans. They didn't give me refried beans. They gave me these other beans. And who can eat those other beans? They're charro. I can't eat those. I need these refried beans that I've never been sad eating tacos is all I'm saying. And I need that. And she's like, oh, that's great. All I wanted to say is I went to work. (laughs) But what I realized is she hasn't been with me all day and she just wants an investment because she knows all I do is counsel people all day. And she's like, so you could take an hour to counsel somebody four or five times a day, have four or five meetings, but you have nothing to say with the mother of your children when you get home? Well, I had a bad day. Not my fault. It's not her fault that you had a bad day. So you know what I do now? And I'm not trying to be super spiritual. You're like, man, Todd thinks he's the best husband in the world. I'm not. You think anybody's praying over this message more than I am? It's Todd. I'm trying to get this right. But this is what I do. And I, 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 I tell my staff members this too. When I pull up in my driveway, I put my truck in park. And I sit there and I say, hey, Lord, before I go in here, they don't need Pastor Todd. They need husband Todd and they need father Todd, but not the priest father. That'd be weird. <laughs> they need daddy Todd. Sometimes Drew calls me daddy. I'm stuck. And, I'm, I'm, I'm. <laughs> and I said, so what I need, whoo, she said. Come back next week, see what happens. Um, and so I'm like, Lord, anything that I may have picked up doing counseling today from a rough marriage, I refuse to let that take root in my marriage. And I'm just asking you that you would cover me in the blood of Jesus and then when I walk in here, my, my troubles, my, my issues, what, what, my discouragement, what, th- those aren't her issues. So I'm asking you to help me be the husband I need to be. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I'm just being honest with you. I would love to tell you that every time I walk in the house, it's like, I'm so glad you're here. It's not always like that. She's like, go back to work. <laughs> so I just want to tell you that's how we do. So we need to work on a relationship and non-conflict questions. How do you do it? Ask questions like this. How am I doing? You may not like the answer that your spouse is going to give you. How am I doing? Well, I'm glad you asked. I've been taking notes. Okay, watch me. What can I do better? Before you get into conflict, establish some rules of engagement. This is very important. Don't miss this. And you have to tell adults this. I know you don't think you have to tell adults this, but we got to tell adults this, right? Never call names. And never speak to your wife in a tone that you wouldn't let another man speak to your wife. If it was another man, you whoop him like patting for a dance. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. One time, this is what the Lord showed me. When when, when the Lord deals with me, he takes water off his fingers and he lets it just drip on me. That's, that's, That's the grace of God. But the Lord, you know what the Lord, he says, when you deal with your wife, you take a fire hose sometimes. And I don't know if they tell you, if you're a fireman, don't put your hand out there. It'll take the skin off of it. If you're not careful, you'll be be handing your wife that way. And why would you do that to the the Lord, that the two of you become, you realize when you're doing that, you're doing it to yourself as well, right? Come on, two became one. Be careful. If another man talked to your wife the way you're talking to her right now, you would 
But you would drop it like a bad habit. I would tell little bro, I ain't got to preach again until next Sunday. Let's get this on. I ain't doing nothing for the next 30 minutes besides whooping your tail. And I know y'all look at me and say, Pastor Todd, you don't even look like that. Y'all don't know how I grew up. I'm a hood rat from the east side of love, but y'all don't know nothing about pa Pastor Todd is holy. Old Todd, he needs some help. He needs some Jesus. And I can get there quick when you disrespect my wife. I had people, I had a man in our church do it one time. And I just went up to him. I said, man, what are you doing? He said, I'm talking to your wife. I said, no, I know you're not talking to my wife. Because if you was talking to my wife, you would never talk to her like that. Yeah. Yeah. This is between me and her. I said, oh, no, no, sir. This is between me and you. I'm her covering. That's right. uh -huh. What you going to say to her, you can say to me. Come on. Now all of a sudden, you ain't so bold, are you, anymore? Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. You go find you another church to go to. Come on. You ask him to go to another church? Yeah, I built this thing. Right. I, I ain't leaving. <laughs> Were you in the right? I was absolutely in the right. We didn't do anything wrong. Do we do wrong? Yes. And when you bring it to our attention, we repent. We're just like, man, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I did that. I've, many times I've had conversations, I mean, thank you for bringing that to my, I, thank you for loving me enough without just leaving the church mad. Thank you for coming and telling me, let me fix that. That's what you do when, when, when relationships matter to you, right? Yeah. We don't just pick up our ball and go home. Well, I'll find me another church. <laughs> well, don't go over there mad, you're going to ruin that church. Come on. Come on, I'm preaching better than you're amen and Let me get back to, it's getting quiet in this little Presbyterian church over here. <laughs> never say never. Never say always. You always, always, sir. Always, like every time. She, every, well, not every time. Well, then don't say always. <laughs> Come on, never say never. Jimmy Evans, who uh, does the EXO, we're doing an EXO conference at our West Campus this week. If you haven't registered, I'd love for you to register to come to our EXO conference. If finances are an issue, email me at Todd with two Ds at TWCLubbock.com. I'll make sure that you get to go. That's how much I believe in your marriage. I will make sure you get to go. Don't, let, don't miss over money. Money's too easy to find in the kingdom of God. Come on, don't miss over money. I'm just telling you that. So he says that a discussion will never rub, rise above the place if it gets heated after the first three minutes. The first three minutes are going to tell how that conversation is going to go. We get prayer. We come back together. We got to step away, clear our heads, never get hysterical, and never get historical. There we go. Never threaten divorce. Never threaten divorce. Why? Because once it's on the table, now you got an option. It's not an option until you make an option. Well, I just threw it out there because I was mad. No, you threw it out there because you don't know how to control your anger. I'm sorry. I'm, I know I'm making some mid mad here. If you can show anger, you can show restraint as well. I just want to, it's impossible for God to make you only one to be able to show one emotion. The fact that you can show one emotion lets me know that you can show all emotions. Amen, Todd. That's good. Thank you, Todd. Listen, never quote the Bible to prove your point while you're in an argument. Amen. Ever. Ever. Jesus didn't ask to be brought into that. Come on, don't be like Jesus said. Let me tell you what. This is the Messiah. The Messiah, the King of Kings, wants you to know right now. No, he didn't want anybody. No, that's y'all. Handle y'all. And the Bible said, let me help you men. The Bible said it's better to live on the corner of a roof than with a contention woman. What does that mean? That's not good. That means your wife has the, she can put you on the roof and there's nothing you can do about it. That's what that, so if I drive through Brownfield, I'm like, what is he doing up there? I don't know what happened. Uh, over at West Campus, I'm like, oh, these people go to the worship center. Look at all those men on the roof. What'd you do? I, I, I oh, it's just a long story, Todd. <laughs> Last one. I'm going to manage my anger righteously. Ephesians 4.26. Let me hurry. But don't let the passion of your emotions lead you to sin. Don't let anger control you or be fuel for revenge, not even for one day. Don't give the slanderous accuser, the devil, an opportunity to manipulate you. When you go to bed mad at each other, at your spouse, you've given the devil an open door to counsel you in your sleep about your marriage. And he's never going to tell you any good, anything good about your marriage. He's never going to bring resolution. It's always going to be bad. And uh, there will never be truth. Another version says, don't let the sun go down. But you can control how you handle the anger, okay? Um, this is for me. I don't know about you, man, when you get in a fight. I found out the later at night the fight goes on, the more agreeable I can get. Like if it's between 7 and 9 o'clock, I'm like, I'm on this all day. Let's go. Ding, ding. Like Rocky, come on. Oh, and Creed died this week. Oh, Apollo Creed, Jesus. I uh, See, oh, thank you for mourning with me. 
He's a ding, ding stallion. Remember that? And, and, and so seven to nine, let's get it on. 10 to 12, I might be a little bit wrong. <laughs> might. One o'clock in the morning, girl, that's all my fault. I did this. You didn't do. You the queen of Lubbock. You, 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 you the queen of TW. You the queen of my double white trailer, girl. You, you it. That's all. It's all me. All me. Lord, I take it all on me, Lord. But later it gets. Don't believe the lie. It'll blow over. It only gets worse if you don't learn how to fight fair. Be slow to come angry. And if you guys are here this morning, can I tell you, you're at a great church to get help. Because we invest in marriages more than anything here. And, and we have several couples that are trained to help you with that. And, and they want to help you. There's hope for you today. If we learn how to fight fair, we're going to fight. But our marriage is going to be different. Because we're going to fight for resolution. Night to win the battle. Make an agreement. This is what I want to challenge you on. Make an agreement that in times of conflict, I will fight for unity and not for personal victory. I'm going to fight for victory. I'm going to fight for my family. I'm going to fight for my kids. I'm going to fight for you are worth fighting for. At some point in time in your marriage, there was something about her that made you go crazy. You do things for her you won't do for nobody else. You'll go buy things at the store for her you wouldn't buy for no other women. Hey, can you go get this for me? Mm -mm, I'm out of gas, girl. I cannot go over there. <laughs> Trish and I were dating so long ago, we just had house phones. <laughs> we got married in, in 1992. We just had a house phone. And we used to call each other on the phone and just listen to each other breathe. Remember, you said, what you doing, girl? <laughs> Nothing. What you doing? <laughs> Nothing. 30 minutes later, what you doing? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> what you doing? Nothing. <laughs> I'm just listening to you breathe because as long as I hear you breathing, I know there's hope alive in my life, girl. That's, 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 that's it. And I drove all the way across. She lived, I, my mom and dad lived on 130th Street, and she was on 4th Street and by Shadow Hills Golf Course babysitting. Ice everywhere. I got a standard Mustang with somebody else's name painted on it. <laughs> True story. He said, Jerry. <laughs> I'm slipping and sliding all the way over the road just because she wanted something to drink. I said, girl, I ain't gonna let you be thirsty. Let me come over there. <laughs> Maybe if I get there early enough, you'll need mouth to mouth and get rest. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I'm, my bad. My bad. I was trying to be a good man. <laughs> but there were things that I would do back then and somehow we lose that in our marriages, right? We lose it. We forget the same thing it did to catch them is the same thing it does to keep them. And if we're not careful, man, we'll forget to date one another. We'll forget to honor one another. And we'll forget to love each other. We'll just take each other for granted. And that's not God's intention for your marriage. And I would love to tell you as the pastor of the worship center that, that I've never taken my spouse for advantage, but I'd be a lie. I have messed up so many times in our marriage. And <laughs> I'm a good person to teach on marriage because the Lord's been beating me up for 32 years, right? Because I make mistakes. I, I don't have it all together. And if Trish were here, she would tell you, he for sure does not have it together. But I know in a room this size, here at Brownfield, west and south, none of them have it together either. So in just a moment, we're going to ask for prayer. And if you need prayer for your home, listen, I'm gonna, this is going to sound hateful. I don't, don't be stupid enough to stay where you're at. Staying where you're at is where it got you where you're at. You want different results? You're going to have to do something different. Yeah. Well, what if she won't come? She'll come if you lead her. If you'll lead her, but if the only time you can lead her is to the bed, why would she want to follow you? Come on, I'm preaching better than you, amen. I'm just real. I don't have time to dumb this thing down. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. I don't have time to dumb this down. The only time you show interest in her is when you want something from her. Your marriage is more broken than you can possibly imagine. She just hasn't told you because she didn't have the words because she's hoping and praying it'll change. And sometimes it's not all the men. Sometimes it's the women. You've been hurt. You saw your mama getting taken advantage of. You're like, ain't no man going to take me advantage of. Well, my mama got taken advantage of. 
and you make inner vows. Rather than the Lord heal that, you make inner vows. I'll never be like she is. That's an inner vow. So what do you do? You start doing everything to be opposite of what she was. And you add everybody, again, you've got this big wall built up. Here's the thing about walls. You ready for this? It's true, nobody gets in. Guess what? Nobody gets out either. Nobody gets out. So I want everyone to bow your head. All of our campuses, west, south, all of our campus, next gen. And I don't want you to let pride keep you from doing what you know you need to do. There's no one in here that's worth going through divorce over. Let the Lord heal it this morning. You're honest. Nobody's looking around. And you're just ready, Pastor Todd. Our marriage needs some help. If that's you, can I just see your hand? Whether you come and let me pray for you or not. Yep, thank you. Thank you for being honest. Anybody else? Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else? Don't miss this, man. Don't miss this. How many of you here today say, Pastor, I don't know that I need my marriage healed as much as I need to be healed. There have been some words spoken over me, some hurtful words, some harmful words that have been spoken over me, and I need those to be healed up in my life. If that's you, can I see your hand? Yeah, whether you come and let me pray, you'll just be honest. I heard the Lord talking to me about my pain. Yep, 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 yep. Yes, praise God, man. The only way we get better is to confront these things. No one's here to judge you. There's not a judge in the room, but there is a healer. Come on, there is not a judge in this room this morning, but there is a healer that wants to put you back together again. So our worship team is going to play a song at every one of our campuses. They're going to play a song. As they begin to play this song, if you need prayer for anything, I want you to come. Don't wait for somebody else. This is your marriage. This is your battle. These are the words that have hurt you. So as soon as they begin this, I want you to come and pray.